Hey everybody, Corydon here with another character guide for you. This time it's Queen Amalia, a character that's coming out December 12th, uh, 2023, under the new Queen Amalia pack. She also comes with getting a free uh, Rifty pet under the unlocks, and I'll talk about him later. But for now, we are going to go through all of Queen Amalia's stats, her level up traits, her builds, and the uh, general playstyle for her. And as always, with all these character guides, I'm going to be putting the perks in the description below and giving you also a few decks to work with her. So let's go ahead and get started. Main thing you want to know about her is I'm going to actually remove her, my uh, picture from the thing for now. So, uh, get rid of that. Alright, Queen Amalia. She is a mage that specializes in cold magic and vanishing cards. And by that, she is the first character that can remove vanished cards out of the vanish pile and back into her deck. Which is really cool. There are some other cards that can remove Vanish Files, or cards from the Vanish File and put them in your hand. But this is the first character that puts them back in her deck and uh, really is a mechanic that should have been, not should have been touched on sooner, but I'm glad they brought it in now because it is a cool mechanic. She's also got a new mechanic attached to her as well and a few items coming up in the patch. So let's go ahead and talk about that now by looking at her innate traits and level up options. For her innate trait, she has Eldritch, which is when you play a spell card that costs two or more energy, gain one spell sword. And what spell sword does is it's a new buff where damage done is plus two per spell sword charge, damage taken minus one per charge. This is amazing. That second part is really good expect increases her survivability as a mage but also would make her an excellent tank because that is pretty much effectively one mighty gate and it can stack up to five times and it stacks with mighty gate so if you can find a way to put mighty gate on her she is going to be quite the beast uh maximum charge is five and charges cannot be increased by card effects it's also a effect that's like stanza where it can't be purged or stolen so i would just probably compare it most to mostly to stanza and the charges cannot be increased by card effects is mostly for Yogger's meat, but it also can't be like decreased or increased by enemy card effects. Her first ability at level 2 is Arcane Reflux, where for one turn, every time you cast a spell, reduce the cost of the highest cost spell in your hand with a cost greater than 3 by 1 until discarded. You won't be able to decrease any spells in your hand down to 0 or 1. But they'll just get decreased by two. Which, this is a really good combo card. You can really set it up to make like a meteorite or a meteor shower or ball lightning cost two. Just by casting a lot of free cards or a lot of uh, zero cost cards. There's also Icicle Barrage, which generates three zero cost spells in your hand. Or Book of Nightmares. One of the upgrades puts three nightmares in your hand, which is three zero cost spells. Which will get you the discount three times off of one card. Which is really amazing combo with this one. And then we also have Regal Cold over here, which is plus three chill charges for the duration of this. And for your next three spells, you are dealing a bit of cold damage, applying cold to the highest HP monster and also suffering more cold, which is useful on cards like Ice Barrier. And there's also Yellow Frost Nova, which also applies your chill stacks on yourself to enemies. And then her level threes are very interesting choices. Her first level 3 is Time Loop, where you change the spell type requirement of Eldritch to any card type. So meaning any card that costs 2 that is in the mage. Actually, no. It doesn't even have to be a mage card. Any card that costs 2 or more is going to get you another spell sword. And then the first time in combat that you reach 5 spell swords, 5 spell sword stacks, you're going to shuffle all the mage cards in your hand into your... Or, you're going to shuffle all the mage cards in your vanish pile into your deck. And every single card that you shuffle back into your deck is reduced by three and you're also gaining one inspire when you do that so if you have like a deck full of corrupted cards and you get five you play all the corrupted cards and you get up, reach up to five spell sword slots you're going to be shuffling all those cards back in your hand one thing to note though is this only triggers once per combat at level three and once you do that you can actually hit five spell sword your spell sword stacks before you're actually vanishing anything like I did and you'll waste the shuffle back in your deck so you want to wait till you actually have uh, good cards in your vanish pile but there are ways to get cards vanished before you even play them 
through means of uh, Nesbuck Spanish, Fortune Telling Yellow, and uh, one of the new Shifting Scroll variants will let you uh, banish, car banish spells immediately. Then on the other side you have Frost Swords, which reduces the requirement of Eldritch to one or more energy, so you only have to play one energy spells to get the triggers. But Spell Sword will only increase damage by one per charge instead. And then when you retreat, every time you reach five Spell Sword stacks, you'll get a Frost Discharge put in your hand. It doesn't show what the Frost Discharge is here. I've got that uh, right here popping up for you. Where you will deal X damage based on your Spell Sword, spell sword stacks times six. So if you've got two Spell Sword stacks, it's going to do a base 12 damage plus the plus four from uh, Eldritch or just... It's not going to do plus four. It's going to do plus two for the two spell sword stacks and then times then uh, two times six for the actual spell sword times X. And then you'll also gain block based on how many spell sword stacks you had. And you're also going to gain a bit of fortify from that. Pretty interesting build. It's will keep her alive. It's also very useful for uh, if you want to have her tank in the front line. Since frost tanks are pretty fun and popular to do. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that out now. I'm going to bring up her other unique card as well, which is Eldritch Discharge, where you're going to be, for every spell sword charge on her, it deals 5x mind and cold damage. You're going to purge your spell sword stacks, and also Frost Discharge also purges the spell sword stacks. And you're also going to be applying a little bit of insanity and chill on enemies while also buffing yourself up with a uh, one inspire, one energize. She has a very interesting playstyle that I love where you're either deciding between keeping the buffs and the like plus 10 damage and plus min or minus five damage taken for these big burst moments or you're choosing just to keep going on. It's a really fun character. Anyways, let's continue on to the level four choices between uh, Rift Force, which you gain two insanity charges and transform all your damage to mine. And when the next time, seven times you apply spell sword charges, you're going to deal mine damage to all monsters, apply more insanity, and even more chill to all monsters. Really great AoE effect. I love this one. It's crazy good. The mental damage sometimes isn't that great because monsters can be pretty resistant to mental. But with the, how much uh, insanity you're going to be applying, is going to be decreasing that. Uh, mental resist down to like nothing and then some her other level four is ice palace where she gains uh, cold resist and every time you apply spell sword charges for up to for 10 uses every, all heroes are going to gain block and shield and she's also going to be applying more chill to herself which synergizes with those self chilled cards as we've spoken before then we also, in her level 5 choices, are Time Paradox, where she gains the Time Loop trait if you, which is this level 3, but if you've already had picked this level 3 once before, she gains the uh, ability to activate it twice for combat, and then once for combat when you play this Ultra Charge card, you'll get a copy of it put in your deck that costs 0, which is very, very cool and interesting, and I can't wait to see what people do with it. And her other level 5 is Unlimited Blades, where if you have less than 3 spell sword charges at the start of the turn, gain up to 3 spell sword charges, and your spell sword maximum count is increased at 12, which is insane for like tanking and dealing damage, because that's pretty much plus 24 damage, or plus 12 if you pick the frost swords spec, and then minus 12 damage is insane for survivability, like I don't see how anything does damage to you, like, almost at that point, unless they hit the enemy start, like, stacking up a bunch of Bless or Sharp on themselves. So, really good level 5s, really interesting character. She is very resistant to cold, has no physical resist, which kind of sucks for ice tanking, but you can get that off with perks, and I would almost always start with reinforce on her, your perks. Anyways, pretty good mental resist. Your starting item is Timepiece, where it increases her cold and mental damage and applies 
two and two to a random once they start. He also starts with, or if you go to the uh, frozen sewers and upgrade her timepiece, it gets uh, plus one charges, which I don't think is worth it because if you just kill the Rat King, you will be getting a black deck, which I think is probably the better item in this case. And then her initial cards are three icicles, which are all right. Two night or three nightmares, which all cost two, which are going to be triggering Eldritch, so it's not a bad idea to keep those in there. Ice lances, which you can upgrade to this yellow version here, that do the split damage, which is really good for when you have uh, spell sword stacks, and also apply chill and insanity. Then we have Frost Nova. Those, those are always good. You can always upgrade to this yellow version where she's self chilling. She's going to be doing a lot of. Uh, chill on the enemies, like all enemies, which is really good. Ice Barrier, which is very good for survivability, especially when self-chilling. Yellow version gives you taunt, while the blue version is just permanent and a reliable way to get Fortify on yourself as a mage. Ray of Frost, which is pretty good. You can either make it burn or you can make it innate, which the innate version is really good, especially compared with uh, Cold Snap. It's a lot of damage up front. It's a lot of chill up front and a lot of suffering chill up front. And then of course we have Eldritch Discharge, which we talked about before. All right, as for her perks, we're gonna go here as always. I usually do my first 20 perks where it's a mix of everything, applying chill, ice damage, mental damage, applying insanity, just getting general energy, survivability, golden shards. Then her generic mage over here, is more of the same, but it goes more into getting the chill charges. Almost always with her, I would go for these wet perks and wet increases cold damage, taking one by charge is really amazing. Of course, powerful perks are always good. I put the one point into burn just in case you get a frostfire ring. As with here, I put in one perk into dark stacks in case you get the uh, ring that gives you every insanity stack you apply does uh, darkness stacks. Then I have the Ice Tank, which has her being a bit speedier with max HP, resist all maxed out. And then we have self chill stuff along with uh, ins applying a bunch of insanity as well, because uh, applying insanity is really good for mighty getting damage on yourself. And then we have the reinforce at the start of combat and a little bit of block because those are both good for keeping her alive. Then I have a perk tree set up or when she's with Wilbur, doing Wilbur things with lightning damage, spark, cold, the wet on enemies also increases additional cold damage, stuff like that. I want to give her some survivability, but yeah. And then I have her at no speed because you want her usually going after Wilbur, so Wilbur can set her up and give her good vanishing cards that cause zero, and then she can pull those out and have them cause zero again with her time loop shenanigans. And then this one I had, uh, it's more of a black deck slash using dark where you still want to use chill when you're using dark or with her in general. And then the insanity in the dark stacks would be very interesting. All right, let's go ahead and get out of perks. As always, those will be in the description below. and go into the decks so let's go ahead here and some of these decks i wasn't thinking and anytime there's frost novas in the deck you can also consider the yellow version of frost novas depending on your needs on if you're going to use the cost or not to or if you're going to be using self chill more or if you want the two cost ones so let's go ahead and look at cheap changes this one only costs 570 to craft also what we do here is change these ice lances to yellow Change these icicles to blue so you're applying chill to yourself and then ray of frost as well to this version you might want to consider changing these frost novas to the yellow version over here we have ice damage plus books where it's a lot about using ice damage i have clear instructions in here combined with bookworm and a scroll of intellect so you can get the clear instructions out and hopefully pull out a necropotence or a really good skill to put in your hand Otherwise, it's going to be uh, Cold Snap with the Frost Novas and Ray of Frost. 
Awe Chul is also with a lot of rain and options like that. I still have the Bookworm, Clear Instruction combos, and Awe Shatters for the Awe Chills. I do have Winter is Coming. I think these two decks are very similar, so <laughs> you might have to get me on that one and tell me to stop being lazy. Oh, there is an alert. That's not supposed to be there, but thank you first and for subscribing. Anyways, we're going to go to the Ice Tank build now, which goes into a bit more expensive. You don't have to go exactly these builds. You can make them cheaper as you want them or select them. This one has the taunt version of Ice Barrier, a lot more of the self-chill icicles, cold snap, the blue version so you can get the Ray of Frost out easier. And then I have this uh, Winter Orb here as well because it does damage based on your block and if you're tanking, you're going to hopefully be having enough block to make good use of that. Then we have the Dark Insane build which is going to change based on what act you're in and what you can craft because I'd be using Books of Nightmares rather than Nightmares and stuff like that. But I also included the Recurring Nightmare in here because that is really good for applying the Insanity slash Dark. And then Curse of Torment also in there just because it's good for the dark explosions and also good for detonating chill because I think the most underused aspect about Scourge is it deals one shadow damage per chill charge at the start of turn so if you're stacking a bunch of chill on enemies it's pretty much a detonator within itself by having a Curse of Torment in there. I think it might be one of the most underrated cards because this also counts as a cold spell and cold spell can be pulled out with a cold snap. And you can even make the blue Curse of Torment not uh, vanish at all so you can always have access to it and of course we have the innate rate of frost and this is more but it's very close to the aoe chill right here but this one has the cold snap in it for uh more uses of squall and a yellow winner is coming rather than just a regular winner is coming so you get the triple wet to chill all right Go ahead and exit that out. And for the final bit, I am going to go over equipment and whatnot. So let me bring up another page of stuff. All right, a little bit more on decks. These are probably the amazing combos and cards that I would craft with Amalia and put in decks. Like Icicle Barrage and two Necropotence is pretty much one of the best combos in the game as a mage and you can get that out with the bookworm and clear instructions over here which I think is pretty darn cool but book of nightmares is really good uh, there's multiple versions of it shifting scroll is good on her you can use the vanish version like I have here and chatter but the two main things I want to highlight are rain and ice lance I probably should have put this before the decks, but hopefully you're watching after to see what cards are good. But yeah, let's go ahead and look at her equipment, or go over her equipment real quick, and hopefully not take too much of your time. What I have here in the amazing tier is anything that draws one or two times per turn, like Fountain Pen or Archmage Book, is really good for her since I think the most restricting thing about Amalia is that she's a mage and she's not going to have the good draw cards, so having Archmage Book, Fountain Pen, are, is going to be really good for her. Niche weapons are going to be like things like Black Deck, Charge Trident, Destiny, Aldrich Sorge. There's going to be new rifts around the map all the time and like pretty much everything from the rifts are useful. And then Freezing Ink could be interesting because for cold damage and just applying more wet. Singing Sword for applying more insane. And then early game I have stuff like Cold Book, Divination Orb, Aldrich Wand. Frozen Orb for, or the three for charges, anything that draws like Quill and Cold Book are really good. Timepiece is just your starting weapon, which isn't that bad, so you don't really need to replace it, or be in a hurry to replace it. As for armor in the Amazing tier, I always love stuff with resistances. Iron Fortress is a big shout out because it gives Mighty Gate, and Mighty Gate stacked with Spell Sword is broken. Draw Hut's really good for anybody. Eldritch Cloak is niche, which is going to be, you're going to be probably going to the, as many rifts as you can, so you'll be seeing stuff like the Eldritch Cloak from the rift there. 
Bayborg Squail could be interesting because you're going to be applying a lot of chill. Cross Guard, I'm not really that big of a fan of it because you're not getting any resist, but the max, the uh, ability where you're applying chill on everything when you get hit is pretty nice. Heavy Bolt, I think, is one of the best items in the game, too, for anybody that's not getting reinforced at the start of combat from perks. It's just very helpful for surviving. And then other early game things like Brigand Armor, Breastplate, Clubs of Agility, and Reinforced Armor. For amazing items, always the uh, charge stuff. Like for every chill charge, apply one burn. Careful with wet cards though if you're going with that because one wet will cancel out all burn. So don't screw yourself by picking this while you have like wet cards like rain in your deck. Ultra Ring is really good. You don't have to worry about wet canceling out your insane just because insane isn't canceled out by anything. Power Coil is always super good. The one is always super good. Mana Loop could be interesting. Avoidance Caller is really good for just staying alive. Also, Amulet's good for the charges and resist. Tearing, niche for the dark charges on Insanity. And then Rift Shards, if you get it from one of the Rift fights, is really good just for the charges. A Horn Bracelet for a little bit of extra energy. And Amber Resistant Amulet. Or a little bit. Amber Amulet for the resistances is good. As for the accessories, we have. Cloud Song, anything that gives you permanent discounts is really nice. Dimensional Crystal is insane because the first spell you play during combat, is, you're going to get a copy of it into your hand and it causes your own vanish, which means when you uh, time loop or time paradox, you're going to get that generated spell and pull it back out. Same with the Mirror of Cassandra, any spell you copy that's a vanished spell and you trigger the shuffle all vanished cards back in your deck is gonna pull or be pulled back out with Mirror Cassandra. Golden Laurels just good on everybody. Endless Bag because again Mage Draw is lacking. Niche ones are Advanced Handbook to reduce the cost of skills in your hand by one. Pulling Servos for self chill builds and self tank or chill tank. Megaphone because it has the insanity charges and makes you immune to silence which can be really good especially against Lana. Uh, high plant Madness players know what I'm talking about. I just like Scroll of Resurrection as a safety net on anybody. Yin Yang Badge, if you get the Terror Ring, it could be really interesting for keeping your party alive or applying more Sanctify. And then early game, I probably should have put Beer Bug in Niche rather than early game, but it's there. As always with Mages, anything that gives draw like Fishing Rod and McSalad are good. Old Horseshoe's good because Amalia has a lot of roles in early zone, or Act 1. I'm didn't really see many events with her in the Act 2 options, but in Act 1 she has a bunch of character events. And then War Banner is always good because Powerful is good on everybody. And then for pets, Rifty is a really good choice for her. Works really well with her. It's her default pet. I think Betty works well with her. Chumpy works well with the uh, with his downpour. Applying a bunch of wet every two turns. On the upgraded one, it's every turn. It applies four wet to everybody. Dolly's good for the chill. Oculi's good for the insanity. Not really necessarily the sight, but sight's an added bonus. And then there is a new node in the frozen sewers, if you're lucky enough, where you can get this icy splash blob. But for the chaos blob, I'm pretty sure there isn't a new node for them. But if you happen to get them in an act four, there you can buy the mystical blobs and get a chaos blob and really help out your party by going through that. But yeah, that will be it for my Molly guide. It's a little short. I know I'm not doing obelisk drafts, but hopefully these, uh, this right here will help your obelisk drafts. Like, just getting Icicle Barrage Necropotence has won me so many obelisk and weekly runs. But yes, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please let me know. I know this was a bit sloppy, but Oh, you see, <laughs> I'm not that great. Anyways, run, brush your teeth, take care of yourselves. You all are awesome. And be well, eat well, sleep well, and do good. Have a good one. Bye.